welcome back to another learning small town business video and uh, today we've got a really important topic uh, that we want to talk about and that is your legal business structure and this is extremely important because well uh, it, it could cost you everything if you do it wrong and that's why we want to uh, go through the various types of business structure that you can have from a legal standpoint and how you can protect yourself and your assets as we go through uh, as we go through this so the first uh part we're going to start with is uh, a sole proprietorship now a sole proprietorship is uh you, you really don't have to do anything at all with a sole proprietor um, it, uh, it, it, you don't have to do, uh, anything. Uh, all you got to do is, uh, open, uh, open your business and, uh, you're, you're set to go. So there's no, uh, there's, there's no issue, uh, at all with the sole proprietorship. Now, the thing you have to worry about as a sole proprietor, well, there's a couple things. One is. Uh, depending on your city or state, uh, you may have to acquire a business license to do business uh, in your state. Uh, I'm in Montana. Um, in uh, our city uh, here, Bozeman, Montana, we have to have a business license to do business in the city. And that's if you're going to call on customers and, and sell products and things within the city. Uh, online business, uh, you may not have to have a business license at all. Uh, there's no state business license and so, um, but your state may vary. And if you do business in other cities, those other cities might require you to also have a business license. So those are things that you've got to consider and look at because otherwise you don't want to be fined for somebody, uh, you know, calling somebody and say, Hey, uh, Joe Smith from the next town over came in and tried to sell me, uh, you know, widgets and, uh, you know, uh, he, sh uh, I have to have a business license. Uh, so, so should he. So, um, that may be an ins instance you need to investigate and see what the, uh, what the legal ramifications are in your city or nearby cities. If you have to have a business license to do business in those places. Now, sole proprietorship, you can only have one owner. So, uh, uh, it can't be a partnership or anything like that. Uh, you got uh, you're restricted to uh, you're restricted to uh, one owner. And uh, let's see, let me look and see what else we got down here under it. Uh, you're uh, you're taxed once. You pay on the profits uh, in your personal tax return. You just run it through your personal tax return, and uh, you don't need a separate tax uh, return at all for a sole proprietorship. But the, the real downside of this, and it's very important, is that if you, let's say you're a, um, let's say you're a um, uh, remodeler and you're driving to a job and you get into an accident with another vehicle and it's your fault. Depending on the amount of damage done by you, being a sole proprietor, everything you own is at risk everything your savings your home your cars any investments anything of value can be taken from you if you're a sole proprietor and that's the downside of being a sole proprietor uh, one accident could wipe out everything you have so unless you're <laughs> unless you're operating in a in a sealed vault or something i would suggest that you consider becoming incorporated and it's not that big a deal to become a corporation so and that's what we want to talk about as we go through uh these um, these structures of the business the most common um structure for a uh, business is going to be and you may have heard of this it's a limited liability corporation or an llc uh, the LLC is, is really the most common one. Um, it's a it's better for maximum flexibility and how you manage and run your business. Uh, you don't need a board of directors or anything like that. 
uh, you can have unlimited owners. Uh, in other words, people can, uh, you know, be part of the company um, at uh, Zoom <laughs> or, or Legal Zoom. Uh, they start about 79 bucks, uh, plus there might be a 20 or $30 state filing fee. So, um, the protection, you're not personally rely, uh, you're not personally on the hook for business liabilities. And, um, you run this through your personal tax return by using a schedule C. In other words, you'll, you'll have a schedule C within your tax return and all of your business expenses and income will be there and you may have a profit you may have a loss whatever it is but um, there are some uh, great advantages to being uh, an llc uh, ongoing filings uh, and fees uh, to stay in compliance your that depends on your state you may have to refile or, or uh, post a fee uh, every year uh, not a big deal uh, LLCs uh, can't go public. So if you want to be a public company, you're going to have to go somewhere else. Now, once you're in a corporation, you can change. You can go from an LLC to another type of corporation that we're going to talk about. So you're not locked into just being one. And we'll talk about that as we go on here. The other thing, if you're going to do business around the world, uh, LLCs are not recognized globally. So uh, you may be uh, taxed uh, as a corporation uh, in other countries. So, uh, you know, the taxes may be higher. So, but for the most part, if you're in a small town doing business in your town or in neighboring towns, uh, LLC is the best way to protect yourself. Now, an LLC makes you in a corporation and that puts you in um, uh, what it does. It legally puts what is called a corporate veil between you and the business. So what that means is if you're uh, the remodeler that I spoke of earlier and you create an accident because you're a limited liability corporation, the only um, the only assets that uh, anyone can come after is the business assets They could come after your business truck, your equipment, um, Maybe, um, you know, if you have a building, uh, they could certainly come after that. But your personal income, your uh, home, uh, your personal uh, investments, savings, all of that would be protected by the LLC. Uh, if you're doing something illegal, there's no protection, obviously. If you're fraud or anything like that, uh, the corporate veil is not going to protect you from any liability. So be honest in your, in your business. So do that for sure. So that's where we want to, uh, that's where we want to be with, um, with an LLC. Uh, the next corporation is uh, one everybody knows about, and that's a C Corp. That's Coke, uh, Microsoft, uh, you know, uh, Procter & Gamble. Uh, all of the major brands are C Corp. Uh, and uh, the reason is they go public and they sell shares on, uh, you know, on the stock exchanges. Uh, they can also have unlimited uh, owners, uh, also known as shareholders. And uh, owners um, get preferred stock um, and it is preferred by investors that you be a C Corp. Uh, again, you're not personally on the hook for business liabilities. Uh, the monies are taxed twice. The business pays at the corporate level and shareholders pay on income they receive. So uh, in a corporation, every dollar is taxed twice. So <laughs> there you are. So with that, uh, with a C-Corp, you got a lot of strict rules. You've got to have a board of directors. You've got to have all these uh, things in place. Uh, you must have a board of directors and they could throw you out like Steve Jobs was thrown out of Apple. Started the company, board of directors eventually voted him out and they brought him back uh, later on when things weren't going so well. You got online filing fees and uh, other things to stay in compliance. So the next one uh, that we want to uh, that we want to talk about, that one is the um, the C Corp with a subchapter S declaration. So this one is, uh, it's, it is a C Corp, but it's better for smaller uh, corporations. You can have a hundred shareholders max. 
Uh, so if you want to uh, sell stock in your small town or in your county or around uh, your state, uh, you can do that, but you're limited to 100 shareholders for that one. And uh, again, you're not personally on the hook for business liabilities. Uh, you're taxed once, only shareholders pay on the profits received. So you do have filing fees and everything to stay in compliance. Uh, there's less management flexibility. You still have to have a board of directors with a C-Corp. And uh, most administrations, strict rules about holding meetings and keeping records. So you got to have minutes and all of that. And all shareholders have to be U.S. citizens uh, or uh, residents uh, in the city or in the uh, uh, U.S., I should say so. So uh, those are some of the uh, some of the things that you're going to that you're going to deal with out there. And uh, but uh, the uh, the big difference between the LLC and a corporation, uh, both protect the owners uh, so they're not personally uh, on the hook for business liabilities or debts. But the key differences include how they're owned. LLCs have one or more individual members and corporations have shareholders and maintained corporations uh, generally have more formal record keeping and reporting requirements. Even though LLCs are considered easier to start and maintain, investors tend to prefer larger corporations, C or subchapter S. So if you're looking for money for investors, you might want to consider the, uh, the other ones. Now, very important, very important. Customers must know you're a corporation. They have to know you're a corporation. Uh, if they don't know that, if it isn't on your letterhead, if it isn't on your invoices, if it isn't on your vehicles, if it isn't on your business cards, if they don't know you're a corporation and they think they're dealing with a sole proprietor, you are not protected. So you have to let them know everything the customer touches, an invoice, uh, a letterhead, a, a business card, whatever you give them must have that LLC or Inc or company or something on there that there's no doubt that you're a corporation. So. That's the most important thing to remember, no matter what corporation you're in, whether you're in an LLC, whether you're in an S Corp, whether you're in a C Corp, uh, any of those uh, are the difference. Now, the one thing you, that, you have, that you do have to spell out on your LLC, LLC is a one page form. Uh, it's address, name of the business, and uh, you know, whatever uh, the, you know, mom and dad are the owners and, and uh, the other thing you'll have to do is what who gets the money if the company is disposed of you know does it go to another company does it go to is it shared or whatever uh, by whoever the owners are so make sure that you have that on there and there's a place on the form for that so uh, the big thing you should do is uh, bite the bullet and check with a good corporate lawyer uh, make sure that they explain to you what each of these does. Um, you know, it would be great if you have got a corporate lawyer that's got some tax experience, they can tell you based on the type of business you have, which corporation would be better for taxes and uh, which, uh, which were not and how you're protected and uh, all of the things you have to do to uh, make sure that you're always in, uh, in legal compliance uh, with uh, with the law and the corporation's uh, guidelines so that your assets, your personal assets, your home, your car, uh, you know, all of your savings, all of that stuff is protected uh, by the corporation. So hopefully uh, that will that will help you out. Final words on uh, business structure. Well, um, you know, as I say, uh, see an attorney, make sure that uh, you've got good advice from someone who's competent to give it. And uh, as I said, uh, you know, as your business grows or changes, you might want to go from an LLC to a, a subchapter S corporation where you can bring in investors and uh, things like that. So, uh, you know, you need to be able to do all those things. The other thing certainly we recommend is have a good accountant or bookkeeper uh, to keep track of all these things for you. So whatever corporation you decide on, 
uh, be sure that uh, be sure that you have all the nickels and dimes and everything in the right uh, places. And uh, a good accountant can set that up for you on, uh, you know, uh, QuickBooks or something like that, uh, or an Excel spreadsheet of some kind, and make sure that you're adequately protected and all your assets and everything are are there. Uh, the other thing about a sole proprietorship, I should uh, mention too, that if you're a sole proprietor, make sure that you keep a separate bank account for business. You have to have a separate phone. And um, uh, I would use a PO box or a, another mailing address for the business if possible. Because if you're audited by the IRS, the IRS is going to look at, do you have a real business or do you have a hobby? And, uh, you know, if you have a hobby, then your business expenses are going to go out the window and you're going to be taxed on all income from the business with no business deductions. So again, that's another reason why with an LLC, you'll put all your, your business accounts and everything will go on the Schedule C form in your tax return. And that'll be the profit of the business or the income of the business, I should say, uh, less the expenses. And if there's uh, a profit, uh, you know, you, you'll be taxed on that, of course. Uh, if not, uh, there is a certain amount of time that you can lose money as a business. In many cases, businesses lose in the first uh, few months they're open or in some cases the first few years i think amazon went 10 years before they showed a profit so check with again with your uh, accountant and your attorney and uh, how long can you lose money before the irs is going to say hey you know what this isn't a legitimate business you're just you're just uh, you know blowing money for your hobby and calling it a business so uh, again, be very careful who you talk to and, um, you know, make sure that they're qualified to advise you. So that uh, that's going to wrap it up for today. If you missed any of the previous, uh, 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 well, <laughs> I'll get it in a minute. If you missed, missed any of the how to create a small business plan, small town business plan, uh, they're all in the description below. Plus, there's a uh, I made I've created a playlist with all of them on that, so uh, they will all be over there. So uh, by all means, uh, check that out. And uh, if these have helped you, uh, well, geez, why not? Why not bite the bullet and uh, you know just hit that subscribe button? I mean, it won't kill you. It's down in the corner there, so hit the subscribe button and. Uh, uh, click the notification bell. You'll be notified whenever we have another one of these uh, podcasts. And we have them every week. So uh, be uh, prepared for that. And uh, we hope this has been helpful to you. And if it is, please leave a comment below. Uh, like us and uh, let us know uh, how the, the information has been helpful to you. And uh, by all means, pass it on to another small town business owner who's not a direct competitor of yours. Uh, if it'll help somebody else then uh, we would appreciate it very much. So, all right, that's going to wrap it up. We'll see you on the next podcast.